the year 1978, the world champion Anatoly Karpov came to the Philippines, well, together with a group of 14 people, came to the Philippines to play a world championship match with the fugitive grandmaster of, well, from the Soviet Union, me. Uh, well, I also have some some group of people, and uh, well, my mm, I have the international group, two grandmasters from England, uh, the chief of the delegation, woman with a Dutch passport, mm, mm, Mrs. Leverick, um, and uh, I invited for some time grandmaster from Argentina, Panno. So okay. But the uh, group of Karpov uh, is overwhelming. And, uh, uh, well, he is winning the match. He, mm, he leads in the match with a score of 4 to 1. Uh, well, we play till the six wins. And the draws do not count. And uh, Karpov is getting, getting tired with each game. So he, he needs to win two more games, but, uh, well, with each game, he feels worse, well, and weaker, and weaker. And so he decides to, to play sh more sharp in order to be able to win with black. And, uh, and so we have uh, the following game, number 21. Uh, well, the best move here is bishop g5. Uh, it is clear, not bishop f4, but bishop g5. Uh, it, uh, uh, well, uh, attacks the knight, which uh, also controls the important, um, important um, central squares. It is well known, but there is a, there is a big theory. Um, well, after the move bishop g5, and, and the move bishop f4 is uh, less, uh, say, elaborated, and so it is uh, um, well more um, space uh, for fantasy, say, for uh, um, for creative work. Uh, so bishop f4. You see, if, if bishop would be on g5, then the move c5 doesn't work because uh, it would lead to creating of the weak pawn on d5. But here, here, c5 is the best move. There is also long castle, but uh, well, I prefer this move with white. Well, according to the theory, white, say, pretends to threaten with b2, b4, and black, black uh, dutifully uh, retreats with his bishop to e7. Mm, yeah, it is, according to the theory, it is the best move in the position. But we should not forget that uh, Karpov team, Karpov's team has several strong grandmasters for help and they have invented something else in order, well, in order to sharpen the, well, the match and, and every game. It's a new move. <coughs> and, uh, well, Frankly, it would be repeated uh, after after this game. Well, <laughs> it is a normal normal continuation, certainly with knight b3 and b4 as well, and now and now e5 and this move. Well, if to take, then pawn takes, and knight e2 more or less forced, and. Uh, Black uh, has fantastic compensation, fantastic compensation. So, um, 
So I played something else. Yeah, I played bishop queen of queen b1, bishop f5, bishop d3, e4. A very strange position. You know, with each move, black has to attack something. Black has destroyed the pawn structure, uh, well built up after well for the for the opening, and now he now he has to do something all the time. Otherwise, his position collapses. Well, here white has a difficult choice. Knight is on d4. Well. Many pieces are hanging. Knight is on d4, b2, b4 is threatening, it's also hanging. Bishop takes f6 and knight takes d5 is also hanging, also a threat. So, uh, according to the uh, well discoveries after the game, the move bishop f1 would have won the game. But, uh, in the, no, 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 it is... Mm -hmm. Bishop F1 here would have won the game. A grandmaster can play such a move uh, after thorough uh, analysis. Well, otherwise it is, otherwise it is impossible. And uh, well, uh, normally I'm accustomed to uh, to play the best moves in the position and not to. Uh, well, not to be afraid to um, to spend uh, one hour or longer for um, discovering the right move. Again, don't forget, I played I played this match with the most practical uh, champion of the 20th century, and I have learned something. Well, after two months of play, and rather rather fast, I made. Uh, well, uh, well, rather mm, well, fearful well, move, but uh, but uh, but very practical one, as uh, <laughs> I would say a Karpovian move. What I played, I played Bishop C two. Take whatever you like, but uh, well, black will white will have um, still some. Uh, uh, some important um, well, trumps in the position, so he must take it now. Now, now it's settled, and now he must do something against the threat. Bishop takes f6, knight d5, and, and so on. So he doesn't like, for example, to take on c4. Then, then bishop takes f6, knight takes c4 with uh, with advantage. No, so so uh, and there is also a suggestion of. Uh, of Larson, who has analyzed the game. The suggestion was uh, d4, knight b3, uh, d3, everything is first, knight takes a5, pawn takes c2, rook c1. Now if, uh, it, well, if bishop b6, knight takes b7. Uh, so, knight takes b7. And then, well, then, well, then knight d6 is a threat, and many. So it is, it is impossible. There is, there is another line here, knight g4. Mm, and then uh, also knight takes b7. Um, uh, no, well, this is the. This is not um, well for discussion. White, white stands always better. So, so in this position, instead of taking on c4, uh, he played queen e6. Well, you see, time ago he would not be afraid uh, of uh, taking on f6, but but he also played two months with me, and he realized that. Uh, the, to well, to weaken pawn structure against me can be can be well punishable. So he played queen a six in order to be able to take on f six. Yeah. So I took anyway, and and took here. White still has to be 
careful because black is fully mobilized and uh, and, and white, white king is still in the center. That that what happened. Uh, here, the best move would be queen b3, attacking the pawn b7. And then uh, on the next move to, to castle, of course. And uh, I would say uh, queen takes c4, for example, here doesn't work because he takes, takes, and rook c4. Knight is hanging, rook c1 is threatening, so, and after knight c3 back, bishop takes a3 with, with advantage to black. So, so again, after queen b3, white has a clear edge and, uh, well, a winning advantage. Instead, you know, I, I got tired to, to play uh, uh, with uh, lack of development and, uh, and so I played uh, the simplest move hoping, hoping to, get, to get something because uh, some pieces of black uh, uh, stand uh, well, the wrong way and pony four is hanging so, so I, played, I played simply castle and rook d1. And here, and here, uh, well, the next move, after the next move, black uh, will have serial, serious difficulties. Uh, so he played queen e5, threatening, threatening, take on h2. So it is difficult to criticize him, to, to criticize him for, for this move. And still, the best would be, as the analysis has shown, the best would be bishop f8. Although after, after rook d8, uh, white uh, still has uh, a serious edge. Yeah, so in the game it happened that. And now this move. It's very difficult to protect the pawn. Don't forget the pawn e4 is weak, and also the eighth rank is weak. So, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> the black will lose the pawn. How it happens? This queen d5. No, he must take, take, hit, and takes. And if takes on b2, takes on e6. Uh, yeah, and he, and by the way, he doesn't have the move rook, rook a2, so he's, the position is lost, yeah. So, so this, this is the best defensive move. But white wins something. Well, uh, if rook b3, then knight d5, threatening with threatening with uh, 97 check so so he cannot protect the pawn a5 anyway <laughs> about the next move i must say something uh, look uh, it is known that uh, the knight on the edge of the board it is uh, well Stands badly. There's even a German proverb. I think uh, the knight, uh, something like the the knight on the on the edge, is a shame to a player. Something like that uh, in translation. So, well, everybody knows that the knight on on the uh, edge of the board is wrong. Even grandmasters know it. But uh, but the the situation is following. It is necessary first to prevent attack of the pawn f2 by rook b2 and bishop e1. Because of that, knight a4 is the only normal move.
Now, well, certainly knight on d5 on uh, somewhere on c4 would be would be stronger. But uh, let's look how it works. It is it is not an easy task because uh, well the bishop is, is very good. Well, the bishop mm, uh, controls the square b8. So knight has to be somehow moved away from a4 in onto the central squares, and to and I will try to do it. Yeah. The first thing he cannot take on b6 because of knight d7 check. Bishop d6. B7. Now he cannot take on c5 because uh, because of b8. You know. <laughs> and after rook b5, of course, of course, uh, well, I think rook c8 will follow. Although although there are some other moves, there are some other moves. Rook c8, rook d8, and so on. Let's look. King e7, rook g8, bishop e5. This is a, a joint position. Here I seal the move. Do you understand what is that? What, what does it mean? The sealed move. Okay, time to go. Uh, well, the position would be adjourned. So, I'll say the, the it will be a postponement of play. So, so somebody, well, the man who whose turn to play had to put the move into the envelope. So it meant that the, the, to seal the move, that, that is exactly the, the meaning. So this is the, 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 it was called the sealed move. The move would be, would be put into the envelope and, and sealed and not known it would be not known to the opponent, but on the other hand, you would not be able to change it. It was already in the envelope, and uh, well, whether you committed an or an error, it was over. It is in the, yeah, it, it was in, um, yeah, in in the envelope, and and so, so it the sealed move. The sealed move was, the sealed move should be always good and better, uh, well, unexpected uh, for an opponent because uh, the, m the position was subject to, to m be analyzed at home. Well, and then, then it, would <laughs> it would be better when, uh, when an opponent had no idea m what, uh, what was in the envelope. F4, a strong move. The king is going to take part uh, in uh, in the fight. Yeah, he he has to take. Otherwise, uh, otherwise he he loses everything. Now, this move. This was the move, which was uh, also unexpected uh, for the Soviet team. They haven't analyzed it. The type of head played h5, but it was better to to um, wait what what would happen. Well, playing g6, bishop d6, something like that. Yeah, h5 um, is a dubious move. Yeah, okay. And now looks as the only move, but it is a winning move. <laughs> let's say, uh, let's say oh, he took uh, uh, he took on g4 with h pawn. And let's say he takes he takes with the uh, yeah this uh, pawn pawn f takes pawn takes g4 h4. Knight d7, 
well, uh, uh, now uh, let's say king king is seven, d eight, uh, well, uh, b eight takes uh, takes on b eight, rook takes b eight, uh, rook f one check, king a two, rook g one, knight e five. King e6, King f2, and the next move is uh, Rook b5, and White White is winning. Yeah, and White is winning. So, okay. Instead, he took. Well, the position is won already. Well, Karpov, Karpov doesn't resign, so so he wants to to play on and on. So I found um, a good way uh, to to finish the game quickly. So I played e4. Well, rook f1, of course. Uh, king takes king takes g5. So. Yeah, so e5 a um, check of course. King e4 check e5. If bishop takes e5, then then knight d3. And after rook b1, knight takes e5 check. Winning. A check is very important, uh, <laughs> otherwise the game would be drawn. Yeah, okay. So, king d5, and rook d1, and now knight d3, rook is hanging, bishop is hanging, well, pawn is to be promoted. Finally, Black resigned. The score in the match four to two for Karpov. Just, just uh, well for you to remind. After thirty, uh, thirty-one games, the score was already five-five in the match, and this was the first step. <laughs>